Right. OK, let's dive into trade show tips. Um, the, maybe I was going to say maybe a lot of you haven't done a trade show. And when I say done a trade show, you might have been to a trade show. You might have been on a stand at a trade show. But have you actually organized a stand for a trade show? I'd say that um, this is something that not a lot of people have done. Uh, in my past life, I have done many, many trade shows, including some very big ones uh, for things like the uh, London Marathon and moving through to more recent times, some of the very, very large betting shows um, that I did in a previous life. But I've also, with some of my customers recently, organized some industry trade shows that they've been at um, in places like the NEC. So um, I'm going to try and if I look down, it's because I've got my notes here. I'm going to try and give you some really good hints and tips as to how to get yourself set up to have the best possible trade show. Now, um, trade shows, they are a great way to be put directly in front of your customers. Now, uh, whether you're talking about uh, a B2C business where maybe you'll sell widgets or whatever it is, um, so going to a consumer show, but the, the vast majority of you watching this will be wanting to go to a B2B show because B2B is inherently harder, if you like, um, to uh, speak to your your target market. So this is ideal. So one of the things I would say is it's really important that you research the right trade show for you. And uh, let me just use uh, an example. Recently, um, I know that the NEC uh, last week put on um, certainly a specific part of it was UK metals, right? Um, and that was all about the metal industry and quotas and stuff like that. But I also know that at the same time, in the same venue, albeit not in the same hall, there was also one for um, renewable energy and extracting uh, energy from renewable sources. So um, think about maybe getting yourself to a show where perhaps there are multiple um, uh, categories or uh, sectors going on. Um, the more people that sort of the more footfall that you're going to get at the trade show, um, the better it's going to be for you. And what I do know from experience is some trade shows are better than others. And there's certainly um, some differences in terms of rocking up for trade shows. So depending on the industry that you're in, um, there are smaller trade shows around there. I use that sort of loosely, right? So there will be a lot of um, networking groups within your area that perhaps host a small trade show, right? So they might um, put on a day where you can have a I'm going to say a store. Generally, these are tables, right? You could have yourself like a little sort of area. And a lot of small businesses will rock up with a, a banner or some pop ups and that type of stuff. And then small businesses and small business owners that want to deal with small businesses come along and do some networking. So maybe if you're um, if you haven't got a very large you know, marketing budget for trade shows, then maybe think about some of the smaller groups that are around. Then you've got those medium sized ones in the large towns, maybe in a conference center or in a theater. Uh, maybe that that sort of hitting your your target market in terms of size of business um, or one of the big multinational ones that happen, say, at the NEC or the O2 Arena other arenas around the country are available, okay? So um, think about the size. And what I will tell you now is that size is proportional to cost, all right? So at the smaller end of the scale, you're talking about a couple of hundred, hundred pounds. In the middle end of the scale, you'd be talking about certainly a starting price at a thousand pounds plus. And in the large multinational ones, you are going to be talking about some significant investment, right? Sort of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 
then you can explode your budget as much as you like. Um, if money is a problem, if, if you know, you can't afford to um, have your own stand at a trade show, why don't you talk to uh, some of your, either your customers or some of the people that you collaborate with? Maybe they also want to go um, to the same trade show. So think about perhaps pairing up with somebody and sharing the costs of having a joint stand. Or maybe you know someone who already is exhibiting at a stand, maybe you can ask to pay a small concession to be on their stand. All right, so there are plenty of ways um, to skin a cat. Uh, and if you can't afford to have a stand at all, well, why don't you just rock up with your business cards, with your brochures, and actually go around the stands and introduce yourself to your target market. All right. So there's plenty of opportunities for you. Now, tip number one. Plan in advance. Now, far too many people put things off until last minute. I mean, look, I'm one of the world's biggest procrastinators going, right? But oh, I can't stress how much easier things are when you organize things in advance, but how much cheaper they are. All right. It, you know, getting all of your design, any of the sort of the stand manufacturers done in advance will save you time and money, specifically when it comes to promotional items. OK, anything that you want last minute, let's say that you needed some tops embroidering or some printing done last minute. There is going to be a premium pay, pay, pl placed upon those things being produced, especially when it comes to merchandise. And we're going to be talking about merchandise with Paul Cooper on the 11th of October. But if you wanted to buy some, I'm going to say just some widgets, some pens, some pens would be a really good example. Sourcing those pens in the Far East, right? is going to save you a whole lot more time and money than sourcing them shorthand through through Europe, right? When it comes to the manufacture of key rings or battery packs or whatever it may be, yes, the more you order, the more you save, but the more advanced you can place your order, the more opportunity your promotional person has got to tag your job onto the back of other jobs. All right. To bring the price down for you. So tip number one, get yourself organized, get booking things in advance, especially when it comes to promo items. Think about who you're targeting and what the key message is. One of the biggest mistakes that I see people uh, doing when they have a trade show, certainly when they do a trade show for the first time, is they absolutely plaster their banners with every single feature and benefit and USP that they've got. And let me tell you, you can't see the wood for the trees, right? When people are walking past your stand, you are much better to, off to grab them with a headline and one big feature and benefit that you offer with your business, rather than them walking past and really not taking anything in at all. So what I would say about, and, 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 and I can almost hear you through the internet. Oh, but Miles, we offer multiple products, multiple services. Good. What I would say to you is pick one, pick your best one and promote that. And when I say promote it, make that the hero of all of your visuals and your giveaways, right? Then once you've got the potential customer, if you like, attracted onto your stand, then you can talk to them about all of the other products and services that you offer once they're engaged with you. OK, catch them with your headline. And then once you bring them onto the stand, then inform them about the extra products and services that you offer. OK. Don't forget any questions you got, pop them in the chat. Now, think about when you're uh, ordering your space, right? Generally, there are a number of different options for you um, via, and a lot of it is outsourced, quite frankly, right? There's lots of different organizations that do this, and they're not all the same. So typically, you can do a space only, which means that you rock up with your own kit, and you install it, and then it's on your head, all right, if you haven't got anything and anything doesn't work. 
then typically a very common way of doing it is something called a shell scheme, which they'll erect sort of aluminium poles around um, your area. They, it generally includes like a carpet and lighting and a, and a header. But what I would urge you to do is look at the small print before you book, because recently I've had it where a customer and like, you know, does happen it's easily done they booked actually they the, what they booked was um the sort of the all-in-one right and i can't remember what it was actually called specifically but it was something like we take care of it all right and quite rightly the customer thought that he paid for the one where everything was included including the graphics and then like a week before the show we got informed that actually no graphics were extra even though we created the graphics and sent them off it was like last minute that we got informed that actually we had to pay another couple of grand for the bloody graphics, right? So read the small print, understand exactly what's included within your scheme that you book, all right? Please, please, please double check that because it can be an expensive mistake. Think about your image, all right? I would say perception is reality you're going along and you're spending a lot of money to go along to a trade show and if you opt for the cheaper option all right to just have your space only and do it yourself please make sure that the stand that you create represents your business and the image and the values that you want to portray OK, because it definitely is a false economy to think, actually, I'm going to save money. I'm going to build it myself. I've got a, I've got a pop up gazebo. Right. We use it for barbecues. Um, I've got a trestle table. I've got a tablecloth. I, I can get some back. I can get some roller banners made. This is all absolutely fine. Right. But does it align with who you are and the type of customers that you're trying to attract? Because I would say it's really important, bearing in mind you're going to be in front of your ideal customers, hopefully, right? That, that when they see your stand, they're like, oh, that looks like a quality, reliable company. I'm going to go and talk to them, all right? So please, please, please think about it. If it's going to cost you money, make sure that it does align with the type of image that you want to portray, all right, not sort of, um, oh, I'm going to save a few quid just because I've got a few bits around the house. I've got some bar stools. I'll take them. All right. There's nothing wrong with it, but just make sure that it all aligns with um, people's perception of you. Right. Is it giving be quite critical? Is it giving off the right type of image? So. Um, I think I've sort of said this, but with roller banners and backdrops, you know, less is definitely more. Think about the image that you want to, uh, the message that you want to get across and just make it about that message. Definitely less is more. Also, think about the layout, right? So uh, when you book your stand, you should be given um, a little layout to have a look at. All right. It sort of shows you um, which stands are already taken and which ones are, are free. Not free, but, you know, free to book um, and think about the footfall. So when you when you've gone to, um, uh, you know, one of these big exhibitions, the main thoroughfare is where people sort of funnel through. And then there's also lots of different sort of, um, I guess, the middle of the show is the most popular. And as you work your way to the outside, <laughs> the smaller people, the smaller companies um, operate around the fringes, right? So perhaps think about where you think the best place to be is. And sometimes having a corner unit, um, even though it like reduces, because if you've got a unit with the, where the back's against the wall and it's sandwiched in a, in a row, you will get three sides because the front will be open. You will get three sides to display images, right? And on a corner unit, you actually only get two sides to display an image. However, you've got two open sides, which you're able to get people going from both um, different angles. All right. So I would consider um, positioning. It's really important. When you do get 
your position, be it um, just one open front or whether it's on a corner with two sides open, then definitely think about how you set that up. You need to make sure that if you're on a corner, you've got two different sections for you to sort of have at the front of your stand to obviously interact or uh, attract people over to you. Um, a couple of little sort of tips here. I'm, I'm, sort of go I'm going into tip mode. Um, you definitely need seats and tables, all right? You are going to be at these trade shows from generally like nine or 10 in the morning till four or five in the afternoon. You are going to be on your feet all day, and so are the people at the show. So having a little seating area, either a comfy seat with a, co a low coffee table or a high seat where you can stand and lean, perhaps lean against a chair or lean against a, um, a high stool, a table, sorry, a, sit on a high stool or lean at a table or a desk is really important. So don't underestimate how long you're going to be on your feet for. Um, think about something to attract people onto the stand. Now, um, in the olden in the olden days, um, people used to, um, I'll refer to them as dolly birds. This is a general term, it's not me saying this, but um, having model looking girls uh, dressed in various forms um, was a way to attract people onto your stand, depending on what show you go to, right? And um, this is definitely frowned upon um, these days to be using sort of that sort of sexual nature to sell. Um, certainly coming from my old industry, the gambling industry, um, 10 plus years ago, they were definitely guilty of this. Um, quite sort of scantily clad, some of the more unreputable companies would have scantily clad women um, on their stands in order to attract that male-dominated industry um, customers to their stand. Um, gl I'm glad to tell you that that has changed in recent years. But think about what you can do to attract people onto your stand. So make sure that you don't um, hide yourself behind a sort of a table and against the wall. Make sure you bring everything to the front. Make sure that you have, if you've got some like, if you sell like big stuff and you've got some big samples, make sure you have those front and center so people are attracted in. You might have, um, I wrote down some bits and bobs here. Um, so you might have an event going on. There may be, uh, I remember a few years ago, we used to do a live lottery and we actually got one of the machines down onto the stand. And every hour we had a live lotto draw where you could win, if your numbers came out, you would win a prize. So think about sort of holding an event which would attract people um, to your stand. Think about sort of giveaways. Think about promotional items to be handed out. Think about using mascots or TVs or doing a demonstration. Um, one of my clients, actually, um, they service grab arms. And what they did was they bought one of those um, arcade grab games. Yeah. So, you know, be creative with it. But there's plenty out there to choose from. Um, try and think of a reason that's related to your um, business to attract people onto your stand. Another tip here is don't ignore the other exhibitors because you're all going to generally be from the same type of industry. So it's a really good opportunity to get yourself around, either meet some of your competitors. Don't be afraid of going to shake the hands of your competitors. You never know what you'll learn from them or from their stand. But also collaborators within the industry, get out there, use it as a promotion. You're only there for generally like two, maximum three days, and you're spending thousands of pounds sometimes to be there. Make it work for you. Get out there and work the room as well. Right, staff, make sure that you've got enough bods with you, enough people with you. Um, if you can, have at least three people with you. Um, mainly because with two people, right, you're limiting the amount of the whole point of going to a trade show is to meet like as many people as possible and tell them all about your products and services. So ideally, I would recommend that you have two people on your stand and one people, one, one people, <laughs> one people, uh, one person 
out of the stand in front on the on the walkway right and actually stopping them engaging them and channeling them into you certainly having someone to be able to offload to somebody else to have a deeper conversation is really important having one person on a trade show stand in my opinion is the rep recipe for disaster because if you need to go to the loo the stand is left and and attended and again that doesn't portray the right image for you i understand that some people run their own business and they haven't got anyone else but if you could persuade a partner or a friend and family to come with you for the day it will help a lot think about food and drink for you um, especially if there's just one or two of you uh, you definitely need some food and drink you need snacks you need to keep your your energy levels up the, the days are really really long i can't stress that enough for you flat shoes there's a good tip um, and I don't just mean for the girls, right? Think about, um, yeah, and that is a, a, a big point. Think about what you're going to wear. Um, think about having um, some branded wares. Um, think about the type of uh, image that you want to portray. So maybe you're suited and booted, shirt and tie. Maybe you, you, you give off a relaxed vibe and you're there in trainers. But make sure that you're dressed comfortably for the job business cards make sure you've got you know plenty of bits and bobs like this make sure you've got your business cards a good idea is to have like a business card dump um a big glass bowl think about maybe a free prize draw like a giveaway win a bottle of champagne from we'll draw a card out per day and you win a bottle of champagne encourage people to dump their details with you all right collect their details you can then contact them after the show Think about uh, data collection in, in that regard. I mean, OK, we we all need to be G GDPR, but um, think about having uh, QR codes for your website. People can just scan those and then they've, they've got your website details or your LinkedIn profile or your socials, that kind of stuff. Make things easy. Um, in terms of a, here's some sort of technical stuff in terms of a TV, right? Um, there's a couple of things you need to know about putting a TV onto uh, a shell scheme. The first one is you need to purchase a wooden insert in order to affix the TV to the stand. I personally would recommend that you outsource to a specialist AV company to install the TV for you, mainly because you're never really there or you don't want to get there and then faff about. Um, they'll make sure that it's the right size. They'll make sure it's all working and all plumbed in, as it were. I know it's electrics. Um, but another important point is uh, you're going to need to make sure that you order a plug socket if you've got a an electrical item on your stand. And you need to make sure the plug socket's in the right place. That's a good tip. And you also need to purchase an electric, an electric safety certificate. I know, right? But, um, you know, there's there's another few quid that you have to spend. Uh, here is a here is a big trick. Here's a big tip. Pull together a little box of tricks. All right. So think about sticky tapes, scissors, pens, pencils, uh, you know, gaffer tape safety pins honestly right think about having a box full of bits a little bit of a first aid plasters that kind of stuff hand sanitizer zip ties just to name a few have an emergency box of bits also think about having somewhere on the stand maybe underneath um, maybe behind a curtain or behind your panel or underneath a desk somewhere to put your coat your bag right your bits and bobs your little bits of food and that's that kind of stuff so think about storage on the stand that's really important think about name badges all right that you know people will want to know who you are and your job title so that they can approach you and then you know like i say think about the samples and the giveaway try and be um my biggest thing with samples right and giveaways is you want you want what you give out to have dwell time right so key rings have dwell time you put them on your keys and you carry them around with you um mugs they have dwell time because they get used and reused and reused 
try not to think about giving something the way that's one time use. That would be my tip. So, um, oh, God, we've talked a lot about trade shows. Um, hopefully that's um, giving you some insight and maybe some 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 nice little tips there um if you've got any questions please pop in the chat i will answer them at the end um but my top three tips for you are going to be in summary act early all right don't procrastinate with it book things early get organized it will save you not only time in the future but also money tip number two keep your messaging simple don't over clutter what you have on your stand make sure that everything is nice and concise concise and you're selling your hero products the third tip and it's the unglamorous one make sure you put together a box of tricks right the the tape the scissors the safety pins the cable ties because honestly once you're there on the day trying to set up um it is quite frantic and you know they open those those doors whether you're ready or not okay so uh make sure that you take a box of tricks with you and above all right this is my underlying or my underpinning uh point to make today is you will spend or invest a lot of money in a trade show be it going along to a small one or a large one and some of the big large ones can you can spend hundreds of thousands on a huge stand right Make sure that you get your money's worth. Make sure that you don't just sit back and you're expecting people to come to you. Get out there. Speak to as many people as you can. Don't get bogged down with those time wasters that are just using up all of your time and eating your free sweets. Make sure that you are as polite as possible, but you maximize your time there. And I'm sure that you'll have a fantastic trade show. That's it. <laughs> 